Good morning, friends. Y'all got lucky. First service, we all came in drenched. It's like the bottom fell out when church started, and it was just from my knees down, my pants are soaking wet, but we need this rain. You know, praise Jesus, keep, ha keep it coming. All right, a couple of announcements. Of course, on the back, you can sign in, scan the QR code. On Tuesday, our wonderful wacky women of Wesley, I'm putting the wacky in there, because if y'all know them, they are wacky. They're having their business meeting in the parlor at 9.30. Come join these lovely ladies and have a great time. On Saturday, Methodist men, they're gonna get together and eat. They always like to eat. They're gonna have all kinds of good stuff from eight to 9.30. They're gonna have their meeting, talk about all their wonderful things that they do, but also, at Market Basket Corporate Office on Saturday, about nine to one, there is a camp fundraiser link sale. So when the guys get done with their breakfast, they just drive on over there and pick up their links. And I have some wonderful men that are gonna help me pull this off. All this money that we're gonna raise for the link sale is gonna go toward camp. And we got lots of kids who need lots of money for camp and I know they always sell out of all these wonderful things. So thank you to my men who are gonna help me pull this off. So that'll be Saturday at the Market Basket Corporate Office. The next Sunday, we get to eat. We have a worship night at five o'clock. We're gonna have a wonderful Thanksgiving type meal. Everything's provided. You just have to show up at five o'clock and eat. And then at six o'clock in here, we're gonna have a wonderful worship service. And a big announcement, Drew will not be here on Wednesday for his Bible study. If you are part of his Bible study on Wednesday, I know everybody's like, oh my gosh. he or Thursday. He actually gets to have a little bit of a vacation time. So if you're part of his Bible study on Wednesday or Thursday, he will not be having Bible study, but we still have all of our Wacky Wednesday activities. So come and eat, fellowship with your friends. If you want to help me with the youth group, I will be more than willing to have you come and help. The tweens need help. There's something, if you want to help clean the kitchen, go ahead and show up. It'll be just fine. All right. I'd like to invite Miss Lynn Huckabee up here. She has something wonderful she wants to talk about with y'all. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you today. Uh, I was asked by Russell Salami. <laughs> he lives in my neighborhood, and he waved me down as I was riding my bicycle by, and I don't know why I stopped. <laughs> but his, I guess, cause of his arms. But uh, I thought he had good news to share, and, and he stopped me, and he said, could you speak to the church about what it's like, what it feels to you for giving, for giving back, and what giving means to you. And, uh, you know, you always say yes if you feel the Holy Spirit nudging at, at you. And I, I feel like I'm speaking to the choir now of everybody that's here, but um, I'll share with you what giving means to me. Uh, I was blessed to be raised in a Methodist Church years ago and when I was young and pretty like the little girls in my Sunday school class um, I noticed the offering plate going by and that intrigued me you know my parents putting money in the offering plate and so when I reached eight years old I had two means of resource a revenue and it was my weekly allowance and the tooth fairy and both paid the same, I got a quarter, and um, I would put a quarter into the offering plate. If I didn't go to the corner grocery store and buy Coke for a nickel and a bag of chips for a nickel, cause in 1960, you know, that quarter went a long ways. But uh, that was my first memorance of um, giving. And in my teen and early adult years, I started giving more as my salary increased. And it was not really a percentage of my income, but it was after all bills paid, which probably wasn't the, you know, might not have been how God meant that either in the scripture. But, um, and then I started relating myself because I felt guilty uh, 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 to the widow in the Bible. You know, in Luke 21, 1, 4, uh, it says, as Jesus looked up, he saw some rich people putting their gifts in the temple money box. Then he saw a poor widow putting two copper coins into the box. And he said, I tell you the truth, 
this poor widow gave more than all of those rich people. But you know, I was in my 20s and I was never a widow at that time. And um, so I know God just shook his head at me if I even tried to relate because we all give differently. Our means are always differently. And you know, in the Bible as a widow in that time, it was, it was so rough. And God loved her for giving her love back to him. Um, Nick and I started dating in our 20s, and I would watch him give to the Lord. He would give the kettle box, the Salvation Army uh, bowl of money, and he would write a check for his church as he tithed, and I was so impressed. And so, um, so that's one of the reasons I fell in love with him and married him. But did you know that Moses was given a prescription from God in Exodus 25, 1, 9? God spoke to Moses. He said, tell the Israelites that they are to set aside offering for me. Receive the offerings from everyone who is willing to give. He didn't say you must, you have to, but who's willing to give. And God goes on to describe the offering so that God would dwell among them. That was huge to me, you know. Um, he has given us so, so much. And the Bible is full of scriptures that paint a picture of the positive impact of generous giving. Uh, five reasons to give is it is an act of worship. It provides needs to others. It is about the heart. And it comes with a return blessing and giving is an investment in the kingdom of God. So giving from the heart is giving God gratitude for all his creation that we enjoy so immensely, the animals, the flowers, the rainbows, everything God has created for us. And um, God just wants you to experience his spiritual blessings when you give. And Luke, 638 reads give and it will be given to you good measure pressed down shaken together running over will be put into your lap your gift of treasure is a direct gift only you can give you will be happier healthier and renewed and God will be well pleased and the reason why I'm speaking in here today is to help us as we go into our 2025 year to um, project what we might can give on our monthly givings and um, help Cindy with her budget and uh, give God all the glory and, and thank him for all the great things he's done for us. Thank you.
Well, today marks All Saints Sunday, and we will be, in just a moment, I'll be reading the names of those saints who have graduated from the race of life, though that race of endurance, and uh, have gotten their crowns, and they are, uh, we are saints because we have given our life to Jesus. Nothing, nothing else makes us saints, but we are saints. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you are saints, but these saints have finished the race and um, have, have gotten their crown, so to speak. So we'll start with um, the passing away date latest to more current. Bernice Mangum. Faye Crowley, Darren Rogers, Flossie Spell, Harold Westbrook, Marion Thompson, Grace Sheffield, Menlo Klingman. Those are the saints that have graduated on to heaven since the last All Saints Day. As we come to this time of prayer, there's not much going on in the world, is there? There's not a whole lot to pray about. I don't know anything that's going on this week that's really important to you, Bobby. Not a thing, right? Well, we do have a contentious election, and we have to pray that it'll be a free and fair election, and that whoever wins, that peace will reign in our streets and the highways and byways, uh, so that we don't um, we don't do things we shouldn't do as American citizens. Of course, we have lots of things on our hearts and minds, not just the election, but that's a big one, and then. Um, of course, we have wars and all that, all that stuff that's um, going on in the world. So let us bow our heads and pray. Most holy, gracious, heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you. Lord, we are living in an anxious country right now. People on both sides of the aisle are concerned, apprehensive, excited, worried, fearful. But let us take a moment now to remember who is sitting on the throne. And we know that is you. Jesus Christ, you are king. You are king today, tomorrow, Tuesday, and yep, let me check, yep, yep, even Wednesday, you're still the king. Let us remember that, Lord. Lord, we pray for your will to be done in this election, that neither side would result to cheating, because if we have a free and fair election, that is one way to make sure that peace could reign on the streets and the highways and byways of America. Lord, um, whatever happens, whoever is elected, we know that there are strange times. There are challenges that we face in the world today that we've never faced before. mainly a looming threat of a more global war. But Lord, we know that you are still in charge and that we are to be agents of peace and we are to go out and share the good news of Jesus Christ. And help us to take that attitude into this week. Even though it's a difficult week, 
because we want our candidate to win, whoever that may be. And Lord, we thank you for being the great physician and gentle healer. We have many names on our list in our hearts who need your care, who need you to come through as a great physician, which you, which you do so, so many times. All the time, Lord, you are the great physician and gentle healer. Be with us this day, Lord, as we look at the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch and spark in us a desire to share Christ's love with the world, both verbally and non-verbally, because that's the answer. Politicians will never solve any, any world problem. But Jesus solves the main problem we have. We are sinners in need of grace, and it's extended to us through Jesus, who appropriately taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward? Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the gifts that you've bestowed upon us, Lord. Receive these gifts as a token in love, a token in our growing love for you. We pray all this in Jesus' holy name.
you're seated. Let us affirm our faith. With the help of the Apostles' Creed this morning, I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried descend into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life Maybe see. Today's scripture reading is from Acts 8, 26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down to, from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopian, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearer in silence. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from earth. So the... Uh, <coughs> eunuch excuse me so the eunuch answered philip and said i ask you of whom does the prophet say this of himself or some other man then philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture preached jesus to him now as they went down the road they came to some water and the eunuch said see here is water what hinders me from being baptized then philip said if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Patty. Well, what a, what a story we have here today. And we're going to get into it. But first, let's invite the Holy Spirit in. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word and the gift of your word. Holy Spirit, I ask that you 
bless and anoint my words today so that the, your words and not, and not me. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, I, I, I say this every Wednesday and Thursday in our Acts Bible study, but there's just, it's just nonstop good stuff. There's just so much. And when I say good stuff, I mean there's so much action. It's so fascinating to see the gospel spread. And today we have Philip, one of the seven, one of the seven original deacons of the church, has just finished up preaching in Samaria as the gospel started in Jerusalem and moved to Samaria and eventually the Gentile world. And, you know, Samaria is an interesting place because the Hebraic Jews, the Jews who, um, the, the Jews, well, let me just put it to you this way. In Samaria, there was what they would call half-breeds. Because what happened was is when their land was plundered and they left in exile, some stayed behind and some Gentiles came in and they intermarried with the Gentiles and so the rest of the Jews called them half-breeds. That's why Samaritans is an issue in Scripture in the famous story of the Good Samaritan. And so Acts is called Acts of the Apostles, but it's, it's really, it really should be called Acts of the Holy Spirit. That's what it is. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit. It's spreading from Jerusalem to Samaria. And now as tradition holds, even Africa. Now that's kind of extra biblical knowledge that I'm giving you that's not really biblical. It's not necessarily from the Lord. But I do believe that the gospel got there because, or at least this part of Africa that we're going to focus on, because of Philip and God using Philip. So after preaching in Samaria, Philip is visited by an angel who gave him a directive. The angel of the Lord said, go to the road between Jerusalem and Gaza, and we know about Gaza from the last year in the news, and this event happened somewhere in the vicinity of the modern day Gaza Strip. It's a fascinating account. And Philip obeys the directive of the Lord, and he travels on this road towards Gaza. What's interesting is, is he did not ask God or this angel, right? He didn't say, well, is there a Whataburger along the way because I'll be hungry? He didn't say, is there a Bucky's along the way because, well, we know Bucky's is awesome. And he didn't say, well, you know, um, I need to know where I'm, if I'm going to do this for you, Lord, I need to know where I'm going to end up. He didn't ask any of that. He just went. Isn't that refreshing? He just went. And as he went, he found this chariot on the side of the road, and in it was an Ethiopian eunuch. Now, a eunuch is somebody that's been emasculated for the service of a king. Well, how does he serve the king? He, he protects the harem, and he's also a non-threat to take over, right? Because he can't set up a dynasty like the current king. And queen, they can't set it up because for obvious reasons, he's a eunuch. And so Peter sees, Philip, sorry, Philip sees this chariot pulled over and in it was this eunuch who was the treasure to Candace. Now, Candace is a title, like Herod or um, Caesar. You'd say the Herod, the Caesar, the Candace. And so this is not a name, but a title. And so here is this Ethiopian man, and, and he's a Jewish proselyte, meaning he's a Jewish convert from a part of Africa. It's, it's not necessarily modern-day Ethiopia. Modern-day Ethiopia takes up a little patch of Africa, relatively little compared to the rest of Africa. But this is south of Egypt. Think of that area south of Egypt, modern-day Sudan, and, and this is where this guy is from. And so he's invited Peter, Phil, Philip. I keep saying Peter. 
Philip is invited into the chariot, and this man is reading from Isaiah 53, 7 and 8. Philip says, do you understand what you're reading? I don't think he asked it in a... I, don't, I think he asked it in a humble way. Not like, hey, do you even know, bro, what you're reading? I don't think that's how he said it. Because the response he got was, how can I know unless somebody guides me? How can I know unless somebody guides me? Well, here's God using Philip to bring this guy to Jesus Christ. Because this guy had a lot of, he had a lot of the answers, right? Or he had a lot of the equation. He had, he knew the Old Testament. He was needing Jesus. And so he invites Philip aboard, and, and Philip hears the man reading this passage. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In him humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. I mean, that is, of all the passages in the Old Testament, that one is fascinating. That's all about Jesus. That's all about the crucifixion. That's all about Calvary and the events of Calvary. And so he asked Philip, is Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? And this gave Philip, carte blanche to just go all in. And I assume this took a half hour or an hour. That's just my guesstimation because I think Philip took him all the way from the beginning and Abraham and Moses and David and Jacob and Saul to present day and focused on Jesus because, remember, the chariot was stopped, but when we picked when, when, when we go a little further in the story, the chariot is moving, and they come to a place where there's water. And the Ethiopian, he says, well, what is stopping me from being baptized now? So obviously, Philip talked to him about baptism, which would have been part of the kind of A to Z Christianity 101. And so, guess what happens? He baptizes him right there. Fascinating. And this man gets immersed, right? He goes down and he comes up and he's happy and he's like, hey, Philip, 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 Philip. Philip's gone. God transported him to Zotus, which is modern day Ashdod. Ashdod and Ashkelon, you've probably heard in the news, it's, it's northern, it's in, those are in Israel, but they're just north of the Gaza Strip on the Mediterranean. And then Philip went up to Caesarea, which is north of Ashkelon and Ashdod, on the Mediterranean coast there, north of the Gaza Strip. So what can we take away from this, right? Because we, what is the lesson in it for us? Well, I think this story beautifully highlights the three ingredients of someone coming to Christ. There's three main ingredients, and these are in your bulletin. First, you must have the Word of God. The Word of God gives us the blueprint for salvation. We know about salvation because of the Word of God. You know, the Word of God says faith comes by hearing and hearing from the Word of God. And so we know in Scripture that we are saved by grace, an undeserved, unmerited gift, by faith, faith placed in Christ and Christ alone. By grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone. Grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone. And, and when we have, in May, when we have our confirmants up here, they don't know this yet, but they're going to have to say that. Because I think that's really important to know that, 
that there's nothing you can add to your salvation. It was all done at the cross. He poured out his sinless blood for us as payment for our sins, and we are washed clean. And so uh, in the spirit of All Saints Day, when God looks at you, he doesn't see a sinner. He sees a saint because you are painted in the blood of Jesus Christ. And in just a moment, we'll have an opportunity to sup at the Lord's table and take part in in that symbolically. So that's the first one. You need the Word of God. The second is the Holy Spirit. No one has ever come to faith in Christ without the Holy Spirit. No one. When I first came to faith in Christ, I was sitting in a church daydreaming, unlike any of you right now. (laughs) not one of you (laughs) and the Holy Spirit hit me over the head and said he died for you he died for you and the veil was lifted and I saw my need for a Savior now not everybody has a dramatic come to Jesus experience like that that happens to be my story but he lifts the veil so we can see our need for a Savior I mean, there are, there are lots of people, lots of good people walking around, and they don't see their need. They don't see a need to be saved because they think they're good people. Well, the, they are good people compared to human standards, right? But not to God's standards. They're not, we're, we're all fallen and broken in God's standards, and we're only made whole in Jesus Christ. That's it. And, and so, the Holy Spirit, I believe, I think, this is bibl- I think this is very biblical, and John Wesley, our namesake here for our church, he was big into this. Prevenient grace, that wooing grace that knocks at the door of the human heart continually until we let him in or he kicks it down or some combination of that mystery happens and then we see our need for Jesus and so those are the first two things that you need to come to faith in Christ you need the Word of God and the Holy Spirit and finally in God's sovereign wisdom he chooses to use humans the human evangelist now that E word evangelist has gotten a bad rap But really, we're all supposed to be evangelists. We could do that many ways. I hear a lot of Christians say, well, I don't talk about my faith, but I just try to be Christ in this world. Well, that's great, but I have never once helped somebody and and just gone out of my way for somebody, and somebody else watches that and says, oh, my goodness, I need to come to faith in Christ. Right? Right? So it takes some verbal stuff. And let me give you two different examples real quick. And we, we'll, we got to shut this down and then go to communion or go on to communion. But, you know, I, in my ministry, I have had people sit across from me. Not at this church. Not yet. I have had people sit across with me and tell me their life. And they've told me blow by blow by blow of their life. And I'm thinking to myself, everything you're telling me, I would have done the opposite. You have hit rock bottom. How much harder do you have to hit rock bottom in order to see your need for Jesus? I mean, I almost want to just grab him by the collar and be like, you need Jesus. But that approach only works in certain certain times. A lot of times it's a softer approach I mean we all every one of us has at least I know I've got a lot of family members and and even some friends that don't have Jesus Christ in their life they don't have Jesus Christ in their heart well if we can't talk to them about it who can well you know well I'm afraid I'll alienate them well they're alienated from God right now so so what if you're alienated from them that's how I look at it Now, he doesn't know this, but I talked about him in the first service, and he's sitting here, and I'm 
I don't have his permission to do this, but I'm going to get your permission, George, uh, right now. Uh, I, he's saying okay. But here's one thing you can do. George has these little, I guess they're little beads. They're not really beads. They're like small stones. If you, they look like very tiny paperweights, clear paperweights. And he has them in his pocket at all times. And what he does is, when the Holy Spirit tells him, that's, that's the first thing. He doesn't do it to just anybody. The Holy Spirit has to lead him and guide him. He, will, he can be at a restaurant. It doesn't matter where he is. Hospital, doctor's office, restaurant, church, wherever he is. The bar, when he goes out to the bar. He will take one of those and he'll say, can I give you something? He places it in their hand and he says, put this in your pocket. And every time you feel this bead, this little stone, remember that God loves you. And one time he went up to somebody and he didn't know that she was Jewish. He said, well, I can't take this. I'm Jewish. And he said, well, God still loves you. Just put it in your pocket. And we can all do that because it's high time that the church does verbal evangelism. And you're going to be hearing more and more about that from me. And, you know, that's not everybody's bag. I understand that. And this church does a great job of outreach. And, and we are a witness for Christ in this community. I'm not saying anything to the contrary. But we have got to get on the horse because times are changing. I don't know if you know this, but... The last days, the clock of the last days started with, with Peter back in Acts, Acts 3. So we've been going now for nearly 2,000 years. And at some point, the rapture is going to happen. At some point, things are really going to change. But isn't that awesome that God has chosen you and me to be involved in the salvation of others? We know that we never bring anybody to Christ. We plant seeds, we can lead them there, but ultimately it's the Holy Spirit. But he chooses to use us because guess what we all have? Everybody on this planet has the same shared experience. It's called being human. And so God has chosen humans to help evangelize humans. Isn't that cool? God is, God is so cool how he does all, all of this and puts it all together. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for, for Jesus, for using us, Lord, to bring people to faith in Christ. Lord, we thank you for Philip and we thank you for the Ethiopian eunuch who both were instrumental in spreading your word in different parts of the world. Help us to also, Lord, do what we can to plant seeds in the hearts of people with the help of the Holy Spirit and the help of the word of God. We pray all these things in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Well, what a special day it is when we get to sup at the Lord's table. And, you know, this is a, this is a table that uh, we practice open communion, open table, meaning if you're a believer, you are welcome to sup at this table because it's not really our table. It is the Lord's table. Also, there, if you want, we, I guess they've been, we've been doing this since COVID, there's a hands-free option over there. There's also gluten-free. These chips here are gluten-free, just, just point to it if you want gluten uh, free option and your server will gladly um, give those to you and uh, everything that is placed at the altar rails uh, mo monetarily wise is going to the UBM United Methodist Board of Mission which is a or United Board of Mission which is just a terrific organization here uh, in the Golden Triangle so 
Let us prepare our hearts. Friends, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another now. Merciful God, we confess that we have not always loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to always be an obedient church. We have not always done your will. We have broken your law. We often rebel against your love. We have not always loved our neighbors. And we have not consistently heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and slavery to death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He, he gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves today in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of the, of the bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his sinless blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Will those assisting come forward?
table's open.
us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to share your good news with someone we meet, maybe someone we know. Because, Lord, it's changed us, and we know what life we have because of Jesus Christ. And we want others to experience that life, too. And we freely give it, as the song says, in Jesus' almighty name.